Hi, this is Lisa from Capstone Editing. In this video, I'll discuss the importance of referencing, how to reference correctly, and when you should be citing your sources. It's mainly aimed at undergraduate students who are just learning about referencing. It's very important that you acknowledge your sources of information in academic writing. You should provide a citation and matching reference in your essay every time you use words, ideas, or information from other sources. So let's take a moment to consider why must we reference at all? I would suggest that there are at least four very good reasons for the strong emphasis on correct referencing in academic writing. Perhaps the most important reason is that if you don't reference correctly, your work may be perceived as having been plagiarised. Obviously, this is not a situation you would ever want to be in. To put it simply, if you don't provide a reference when you're using someone else's words or ideas, you're saying that those words or ideas are your own, and you are, in effect, plagiarising the work of that person. This may not be intentional, but it is plagiarism nonetheless. References are absolutely essential to avoid accidental or unintentional plagiarism. This leads into the second reason for the importance of correct referencing. It demonstrates your critical engagement with the literature in your field. It's expected and required at the university level that all your assignments will contain references. Otherwise, you're saying that the essay is made up entirely of your own original ideas and that you have not engaged critically in any way with the literature. A passing grade requires that you use a minimum number of references. You can check your assignment marking criteria or ask your lecturer about this. And a good grade requires many more references than this. The purpose is to demonstrate the depth and breadth of your research to show that you have read and engaged with the ideas of the experts in your field. The third reason that you must reference in your academic writing is that it allows you to give credit to the writers that you've drawn your information from. When you write academically, you are writing within an intellectual community. You position yourself within that community by the authors and works you cite. Correctly citing your sources is an important part of operating within your field of study. Correctly crediting your sources is important for another reason as well. This is the fourth and final reason that I'll touch on here for why students must reference. It allows your reader or your marker to verify the validity of your work. Through accurate referencing, you're providing all the necessary information for your reader, your lecturer or tutor, to locate your sources. This allows them to confirm your interpretation of the sources or the facts that you've used to prove that your arguments are sound. Thus, it's a good idea to keep careful records of all the sources you've accessed when researching. This way, you don't have to hunt for these details after you've finished writing. So now that we know why we must reference, the question is raised, how can you incorporate the ideas of others into your work? There are two ways to do this, by quoting directly and by paraphrasing or summarising. Let's look at quoting first. A quotation is a word-for-word -word reproduction of someone else's words, either spoken or written. When quoting from another source, you must keep in mind four things. One, you must present the quotation between quotation marks, followed by the citation. If the quotation is long, indent it instead of using quotation marks. Two, you must use quotation marks even if only borrowing a single word or phrase from another source. Three, you must include page number or location information for the citation. And four, you must integrate the quotation into your text in a natural way. First, I'll show you some examples of quoted text followed by a citation, and then I'll talk about what I mean by location information and integrating quotations naturally. In the first example on this slide, the shorter quotation is presented within the sentence between quotation marks. Here, single quotation marks are used, as is appropriate following British Australian language conventions. Notice that the quotation flows grammatically as part of the sentence. 
In the second example on this slide, the longer quotation is presented as an indented block quotation. It is incorrect to use both indentation and quotation marks here. The indenting is used instead of quotation marks for long quotations. How many words a quotation has to be to be considered long and require indentation changes depending on the referencing style you're using. For example, if you're using APA, citations of over 40 words should be indented. In Harvard, it's usually 30 words. The citations on this slide follow APA style. Your citations may appear differently if you're following another style or if you are mentioning the author name in the text. You should follow your referencing guidelines for the correct presentation and placement of the citation. However, you'll see here that for both citations, a page number has been provided. So it's important to know what to do when a source doesn't have page numbers. In this case, any location information that is available to you should be used. For example, if you're citing a web page, provide the paragraph number or section heading. If you're citing a transcript, give the line number. This example quotation on this slide comes from a blog article. Perhaps one of the most common mistakes a student can make when using quotations is to not integrate them well enough into their text. Quotations must be directly relevant to your argument and they must be incorporated in your writing in a natural way. This means you must lead into the quotation. It can't be standing on its own unconnected. It may also be necessary to modify a quotation slightly to fit it grammatically into your writing or to provide necessary clarification. One easy way to lead into a quotation is to use the author's name to introduce the quotation. In this example, notice that because the author's names are referred to in the text, they aren't repeated after the quotation. Notice also the use of an ellipsis. Those three dots, an ellipsis, represent words from the original source that have been omitted in this quotation. If you omit words, you must be sure that the original meaning of the quotation is retained. You should never omit words to change the meaning of a quotation. Using an ellipsis is an excellent way to avoid quoting unnecessary or irrelevant details. It can also help to fit the quotation grammatically into your sentence. However, the most, most important punctuation tool for modifying quotations so that they can be integrated into your writing is the square bracket. In this example, you can see the original source sentence. It uses the present tense. Assume that you're writing your essay using the past tense, which is necessary if you're following an APA style. If you were to quote this sentence with no modification, it would not fit grammatically within the surrounding text. But don't worry, some minor modifications to the verb tense in the quotation solve the problem. To show which, which words have been modified from the original, present these inside square brackets. You can also use square brackets to add clarification to a quotation. In the example on this slide, it was necessary to clarify the context of the line study. It's observations related to academic university standards in Australia. Adding in Australia in a grammatically logical place provides this clarification. Adding clarification is especially useful if the original source used a pronoun like it or they in the sentence being quoted. Now, knowing how to quote is extremely valuable for academic writers. However, it's even more important to be able to summarise and paraphrase effectively. Summarising means giving an overview of the main ideas in a condensed form. Paraphrasing means putting an idea, usually in detail, into your own words. To summarise or paraphrase well, you need to read carefully and understand the idea in the source. Then you can think about what those ideas mean in the context of your assignment and write them in your own words, integrating them well into your own writing. If you take the sentences completely from the original source and just change a few words, this isn't paraphrasing and it could be considered plagiarism. 
For some students, the temptation to use a source's original wording is high, especially if English is your second language or if you just can't figure out how to say the same thing in different words. To avoid this, try using the following strategy. 1. After reading and understanding the author's ideas, write just a few of the keywords on a separate piece of paper. See if you can change some of the keywords to other words while keeping the original meaning of the sentence or sentences. Next, think about if you can reorganize the order of the keywords to write the sentences that keep the original meaning but that are quite different to the original. This could mean flipping the sentence. Three, using your keywords and without referring to the original source, write your new sentences. It takes a while at first, but the process becomes automatic with practice. Here's an example. Here we have an original source sentence. Based on my understanding of the meaning of the sentence, I've noted some keywords. You may like to quickly pause the video at this point to see if you can reorder these keywords and write a new sentence with the same meaning. The next slide contains my new sentence using these keywords. Compare your sentence with mine. Do you agree my sentence has the same meaning as the original source sentence? Do you agree that I have paraphrased it in my own words? Putting others' work into your own words will not only ensure the material is effectively integrated into your writing, it will also demonstrate to your lecturer or tutor that you have understood, observed and interpreted the information correctly. And this is the key purpose of essay writing at university and it will help you to get better grades. In addition, the better you get at putting complex ideas into your own words, the more developed your writing style will become. The final point to be covered by this video is when to reference. First, remember that the need to reference is not limited to academic sources like books and journal articles. You need to reference all words, ideas, or information taken from any source. These sources might include ones like the following. You'll notice that this list includes any audiovisual sources you may use, like DVDs or news reports, and pictures, including those found by a Google image search. These are among the most common sources that students forget to reference. Regarding point 10 on this list, lectures, this is not always necessary. But check with your lecturer or tutor about his or her preferences before you draw on his or her ideas. It's normally best to refer to a published academic source that provides the same information rather than to the lecture itself. If the source you're citing is retrievable, that is, it can be located by another person using the information you provide in the reference list, you must provide a reference for the source. However, if the source is only available to you, for example, a personal interview or email or a private Facebook post, you should cite all necessary details in the text, but you don't have to provide a reference in the reference list as well. Only irretrievable sources are not included in the reference list, and even these still must be cited in the text. Finally, the only times you would not provide a citation are as follows. When you are referring to your own observations, for example, a report on a field trip or experiment results, when writing about your own experiences, like in a reflective journal, when writing your own thoughts, comments, or conclusions in an assignment, when evaluating or offering your own analysis, for example, as part of a critical review, when using common knowledge, so facts that can be found in numerous places and are likely to be known by the general public or folklore, and when using generally accepted facts or information, this will vary in different disciplines of study. If in doubt, ask your tutor. If you are concerned that you may not have referenced correctly, you should ask your tutor, lecturer, or academic learning advisor for their advice before submitting your assignment. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like it and share it with your friends and colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe to the Capstone Editing YouTube channel and the blog on our website for more helpful articles on referencing. Thank you.